Aum. Yata kasho rishi kesho nano padhigato vibhu tad bhedad bhinnar vad bhati tanna se kevalo bhavet. Yata, just as, akashaha, space, rishi keshaha, the omnipresent truth, nanopadigataha, associated with various conditionings, vibhu, the all-pervading, tatbhedat, because of the upadi's differences, bhinavadbhati, appears to be diverse, Tanashe on the destruction of those upadis, kevalaha, one, bhavet, becomes. As the all-pervading akasha appears to be diverse on account of its association with various diverse upadis, and becomes one on the destruction of the upadis, so also the omnipresent Lord appears to be diverse on account of his association with various upadis and becomes one on the destruction of these upadis. Namaste. So this verse is actually a continuation of the previous verse, or rather the completion of the thought begun in the previous verse. That... Vishnu represents the all-pervading consciousness of Brahman in the material universe. Vishnu does not exist outside the material universe, even though the bhaktas like to think so. <laughs> they say, Narayano paro vyaktat, which means that Narayan, or the original Vishnu, is transcendental. But the concept of Narayana has no relevance outside of the existence of the universe. And after all, as the, his role as the maintainer, he has to believe that the universe is real, at least to some extent. So all these things point to the fact that Vishnu is not actually like God, you know, a personal, personal God or a personal form of God. But rather, he is an expansion of Brahman's consciousness, which is all-pervading in everything, actually, and especially in the living beings, where he enters into them through the Brahmarandra, the hole in the skull at the parting of the hairs, and then becomes situated within the heart as the source of living energy for all beings, prana. And in the Vedas, the original Vedas, we're not talking about the Puranas now, the Vedas, that Vishnu, Antaryami, dwelling in the heart within, is considered prana, the life energy of the living being. So he is worshipped as prana, he is worshipped as consciousness, as mind, as light. For example, the light in the eye. If you've ever seen someone leave the body at death, that there's a certain light in the eye that disappears at the moment of death, and the eye becomes dull, flat, lifeless. So in this way, we can see the movements of the living energy. And this living energy is Vishnu. And beyond Vishnu, Brahman. So let's take a look. I just happened to be reading in Vedanta Sutra, uh, one of the commentaries of Shankaracharya. And he explains this point expressed in this verse in detail. Strictly speaking, there is no soul under bondage and different from God. 
Still, just like the association of space with such conditioning factors as pots, jars, mountain caves, etc., it is assumed that Brahman has association with such limiting adjuncts as body, etc. And people are seen to use words and ideas based on that association, as, for instance, the space in a pot, the space in a jar, and so on, though these are non-different from space as a whole. And it is seen that by that association are created in space such false notions of difference as the space within a pot. Similarly, in the case under consideration, the idea of difference between Brahman and a transmigrating soul is false, having been created by non-discrimination, that is, ignorance, which causes ascription of the limiting adjuncts body and the rest, to Brahman. And though the self, as a distinct entity, continues as before, it is seen to remain falsely identified with the body and the rest, the identification having arisen from a series of conceptual errors. So the conceptual errors are mistaking the boundaries of the limited phenomena, the living entity and so forth, as being boundaries of the self. Understand? In other words, thinking, this my body is myself, and myself, my being, ends at the boundaries of this body. See, that's not correct. That is the fundamental misunderstanding, the fundamental conceptual error, as Shankara calls it, that results in a series, a cascading series of errors, mistaking everything that is apparently separate as being part of the self, as being part of Brahman. Buddha, in his analysis of the root sequence, the Mula Pariyaya. He understands by observing himself that every sense perception that comes into awareness is somehow or other construed to mean that this is mine. And because there are so many things that are mine, huh? my body, my mind, my house, my bed, <laughs> my this, my that, right? So because there are so many things that are mine, I must be real. This is the computation. This is the algorithm. This is the program at the root of all illusory thoughts, beginning with I, in the sense of the individual. If one can change this identification from the body to the self with a capital S, uh, the real self, Brahman, the all-pervading self, then all this ignorance is dispelled. There's a wonderful shloka in Srimad Bhagavatam which expresses this nicely. Ritertam yat pratiyeta na pratiyeta chatmani tad vidya datmano mayam yata bhaso yata tamaha. O Brahma, whatever appears to be of any value, if it is without relation to me, has no reality. Know it as my illusory energy, that reflection which appears to be in ignorance. But this verse is so wonderful because it has such a deep meaning. It describes the whole cosmic situation very nicely. That Vishnu, the all-pervading consciousness of Brahman within the universe, is the root of everything, the cause of everything, 
and all the objects that we perceive are simply the phenomena reflected in that consciousness, like a mirror. But if any of this is seen without relation to Brahman, without relation to consciousness, then it's just ignorance, maya, huh? a reflection only. In other words, the beingness, the existence of the objects in the world is illusory. And the apparent beingness of these objects is only borrowed. It's reflected from Brahman as Vishnu, the all-pervading consciousness. So that all-pervading consciousness is the substrate. And then due to this computation in the mind that wants to make everything mine, 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 mine. <laughs> it's a kind of madness, really. These objects appear to be real, but actually they're only reflections in ignorance or darkness. Just like we see the moon and the planets, they appear to be effulgent. They appear to be emitting light. But actually their light is only a reflection of the sun's light. This is an example. Huh? Or when we're driving in a car at night, we can see so many things only because of the reflection in the headlights of the car. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to see them and we might collide with them. So this is the situation. This is the position. This is the nature of the material world. That there are all these illusory objects moving around. And it's like a video game, you know, like Pac-Man trying to eat up all of these things, whatever they are, dots or whatever. You know, the mind is trying to uh, include all of these different objects by identifying them as mine. And the, the mind actually flourishes on this food, the food of impressions. But these impressions really just do nothing but fill the mind with illusory objects. And we see the apparency of cause and effect where there actually isn't any. The real cause is Brahman manifesting as all-pervading Vishnu within the universe and revealing all these illusory objects simply by reflection. The example is given of the illusion of water in the desert. What is it? You, you know, if you drive on a desert road on a hot day and you see what appears to be water off in the distance, it's not really water. It's simply the reflection or technically the refraction of sunlight in a temperature inversion layer over the hot sand. It's not real, but it appears to be real. It appears to have existence, but its existence is only a reflection. So in the same way, these objects in the material world are simply reflections of consciousness. And when we come to realize consciousness, that consciousness is what we are, that consciousness is what everything that appears to be really is, huh? then the illusion disappears and we see it as it really is through knowledge, not through the senses, not through the mind, but through intelligence. That's why it is said that the intelligence resides in the heart identified as pure self. Om Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namat Shivaya.